I was sitting on the bank of the river Ganges when I saw coming out of the forest was a holy man. He walked right up to me. His first words, take off your western clothes. I took off my jeans and said a prayer, threw them in the river. They were gone forever. And I took off my shirt and gone forever. And then he had these two strips. He said, these, these will be your underpants. Throw your underpants in the Ganges. Now this was becoming serious surrender the first day. I took off my underpants. I remember they were fruit of the loom. And it was my only pair. They were gone. And then he said one more thing to me. The Ganges will become your mother. You will understand this because she will reveal it in time. Then he turned around and walked away and I never saw him again. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. My own guru, Srila Prabhupada, wrote a beautiful prayer, and in that prayer he's praying to God. Just let me be a puppet. Make me dance to give happiness and joy to others. It is not by learning scriptures. It is not by making followers. It is not by doing whatever you're doing very expertly. It is not by your austerities. That is not that the is qualification, not qualification to see God. God. It is only devotion. I was born in Chicago, brought up in a northern suburb, and reached my teens in the 1960s. Here I was being taught as we would pledge allegiance to our flag that this was a nation which was the home of the free. But just a few miles away, in the ghettos of Chicago, the African-American people, in those days, if you're born in the poverty of the ghetto, 99% you will live and die in the ghetto. And I found myself marching with Martin Luther King's people and getting bottles and stones and curses thrown at me by my white brothers and sisters. Meanwhile, the music of the 60s, they were like our prophets. And they were singing about revolution, about peace and love. At the same time, there was a war raging in Vietnam, and when you turned 18, unless you had a deferment, you were drafted and forced to fight. I found myself in Grand Park in Chicago at the Democratic Conventions on a peaceful demonstration to just question the validity of the Vietnam War, and I was tear-gassed and chased and clubbed down by the police, who I was taught were protecting my freedom. This was painful and confusing. It seemed all so hypocritical. And I came to the conclusion, if I really want to make a difference in the world, 
I have to find a spiritual foundation for myself. So I began traveling to see how other people in different countries view the world. And it's a long story, but I had a calling on the top of a mountain, praying, meditating, and reading books from sunrise to sunset. That day I was weeping for direction. And I heard three words. And when I heard those three words, I knew if I follow this calling, everything of my past is gone. In my whole life, everything will be new and dangerously challenging. Am I willing to do it? Those three words were go to India. While I was in India, wandering around through the Himalayas and the jungles, and going to different ashrams and learning from Buddhists and yogis and Baha'is and Sikhs and Jains and Parsis. I was trying to understand so much. In the Middle East, I was studying Islam that I really wanted to search to find out, is there a common essence of all these spiritual paths that could unite us instead of divide us? And I was learning more and more that the essence of all these great religions is not to be a Muslim or a Jew or a Christian, but to love God and to be a compassionate instrument of God's love to everyone. In 1970, I hitchhiked from London through Europe and through the Middle East. And finally, after six months, I reached India, which was my goal. You know, when I left America in 1970, on my way to India, I had never met an Indian in my life. I had never eaten Indian food in my life. And in my case, I didn't know where India was, and I didn't have a map, but I just had faith, if I keep hitchhiking east, I'm gonna get there. There were dozens of times while hitchhiking through the Middle East that I was sure I was going to die and never make the land of my dreams. But here I was only a couple steps away. I scrimped up all my money. I remember exactly. It was 26 cents in four different currencies. I was covered with dust. I was very, very sickly. But I felt such great anticipation. I finally arrived. I was not at all anymore a teenager coming from the suburbs of Chicago. When I wrote to my mother and father that I'm living in the jungles of the Himalayas in a cave, they didn't think I was cool at all. <laughs> they were absolutely in distress. They were worrying their hearts out. I lived for some time with Mother Teresa. I'll never forget something she told me. She said that the real problem in this world is hunger, not hunger of the stomach, hunger of the heart. In this world, People learn how to hate before they learn how to even reason. People should learn to understand the universal values.
If we actually want to make the world a better place, we have to build the foundation to learn to honor and value life. Real education is to have the wisdom to see every living being with equal vision.